Okay, so here's a picture of the Flux Alpha Frame from Hyena Electric Bikes uh, on the Endless Sphere Forum. The cell layout that I went for is cells in 10 parallel, uh, connected in 18 series. I did this in two layers uh, using copper trace, 2 millimeters wide, uh, four pieces of that to connect the bottom layer to the top layer. The cells I bought were Samsung 30Q cells from Fastech. Um, they were pretty well priced um, and they're good batteries. Um, pretty sure they're genuine and they're um, yeah, well known for e-bikes because of their high energy density and their um, good specs for power output. The nickel strip I bought uh, was from AliExpress. Uh, it was about 10 or $20. Um, it was yeah, 0.15 in thickness and 7 mil wide and it was pure nickel strip and it welded really well. The wire I used for the balance leads to the BMS was 22 org thickness um, and it was silicon coated and I got it from Hobby King. Here's the gaskets I got for the positive end of the battery. Uh, definitely get yourself some of these for your battery build. I got mine from AliExpress. Uh, they stick on and yeah, they seem to work really well. Here's a picture of my workspace coming together. You can see I've got my hot glue gun, my goggles, uh, the nickel strip, copper, connectors, tape, uh, the wood to hold the cells as I was doing some hot gluing and the coloured paper there is actually sort of foam paper um, and that's the white uh, PVC cardboard and backing board as well that I used uh, in the build. My batteries came from China and they came individually wrapped to Australia. Uh, I'd much prefer to be unwrapping them than wrapping them that's for sure. I use this foam paper that I got from uh, Lingcraft like a hobby shop um, it's about one or two mil thick um, and yeah, fairly useful for padding uh, around batteries and various other bits and pieces. I just made a basic L shape out of some pine wood to uh, support the batteries when I was hot gluing. I used some copper sheet uh, for the ends of the battery, the terminals basically. Um, it's 0.25 mil thick um, and it was about 10 bucks from the local hobby shop. Yeah, here's how my cells look uh, after unwrapping them. It's basically one in every container. Bit of a waste, but hey, that's how they've got to be shipped these days, apparently. Here's those gaskets you saw earlier stuck to the ends of the cells. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but yeah, it definitely helps prevent shorts uh, when sticking the nickel strip to the top of the battery. The little wooden jig I had was really handy uh, to do the hot gluing of the cells. Uh, basically just glued them in uh, rows of five. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. My workbench was not very well set up, so I definitely got a sore neck after gluing a whole bunch of the groups together. Um, but the jig worked really well in making sure that they were all uh, nicely lined up and even, uh, which is obviously going to be important for your battery build. Yeah, finally got some footage, uh, just gluing these things together, it's pretty quick. This is just gluing the second side so I didn't have to hold them together. And that's all there is to it. I was pretty happy with the progress I was making at this point. The hardest part here is um, sticking five cells to another group of five cells using the hot glue gun. Um, definitely takes a little bit of practice but um, you'll pick it up pretty quick. Um, it's just important to get the cells all lined up and square and, and flat together um, and, and to do that quickly before the hot glue dries out. I used a JP spot welder that I borrowed from a friend and the deep cycle battery from my caravan and I actually built my battery in the caravan. The actual spot welder is connected there to the negative uh, terminal of the battery and the leads coming out are the actual probes you use to do the spot welding of the nickel strip onto the battery. Here's an overview of the workspace. Uh, it's a good idea to try and 
keep it clean and free from little strips of metal so you don't get any short outs on your batteries as you're building. So here's the result of my first attempt at uh, spot welding uh, two packs of 10 parallel batteries uh, together to form the first uh, series. Um, as you can see I used uh, most of the time used about four uh, little spot welds uh, per cell um, and yeah you have to be very careful uh, on the positive end uh, to make sure you weld on uh, directly onto the top of the uh, positive end and not anywhere else. Starting to make some good progress here with the series groups um, and using just green painters tape uh, to cover up the completed welds uh, to prevent any accidental shorts. So here's the two layers, uh, nine series each, uh, finished, just resting with their, covered up with uh, their painters tape. Here's a close up of the spot welder from Reba on the Endospheres forum. Um, just yeah, search for spot welder and I'm sure you'll find it, um, although I don't think he's making them anymore, uh, unfortunately. Here's a close up of my copper trace that is actually soldered directly onto the nickel strip. Uh, it's two millimeters uh, in diameter. I ordered this from eBay. Um, I pre tinned uh, the copper with some solder. Um, you have to use quite a high heat uh, to get the solder to stick to the copper. Um, the reason we do this for high power batteries is to allow uh, the high amperage uh, to flow through because the nickel strip on its own is uh, not really going to be rated for 100 plus amps. So this really helps uh, carry the current uh, and keep things cool. When you're soldering this on basically directly to the batteries or very close to the batteries, uh, you want to do it very quickly. Um, no more than sort of three or four seconds of, of hot heat applied uh, directly to the batteries. And uh, I used a little uh, sort of sponge uh, on a stick directly after I soldered to cool down uh, the soldered area in the battery uh, as quickly as possible just to minimize any damage that you might do to the battery. Here I'm soldering the balance leads on to basically each parallel group. It's a little bit more complicated than that but I won't get into it here. Um, but yeah it's basically just uh, fairly simple straightforward uh, with a quick solder um, onto, this, onto the side there of, of each parallel group. A good tip here is to cover the ends of the wires that uh, aren't being soldered on. I used a bottle to put them in and, and cover them up. Um, also numbering the cables uh, as you're going is a good idea to keep a track of where you're up to and which cables which. So at this stage we've got all the BMS wires welded on. You can see all the copper trace there, um, in particular joining the two packs together in the middle. I've got four copper trace uh, pieces with a little gap uh, ready to fold the pack uh, in half together on itself to form the two layers. But before I do that I put some foam over the tops of the cells obviously to prevent any shorts. And you can see there I also added some coraflute, which is basically plastic cardboard uh, in between the two layers there to um, add uh, a lot better protection. Um, you can also see here we've got the uh, where are the bent with the copper um, traces. Um, so that worked out really well and that joins the two packs uh, together uh, in series and provides uh, lots of uh, room for lots of current. I'm really happy with the progress at this point and basically uh, just looking at routing the BMS wires uh, here all nice and neatly out uh, to one end. So with a little bit of fiddling around I managed to get the uh, BMS wires you know, fairly nice and neat along the side of the pack. Uh, you'll see here also I've got the uh, positive terminal uh, coming off the top pack there with um, four copper traces as well to provide the current um, out to the red wire. Um, I did some pretty heavy duty soldering uh, of that wire onto the copper uh, strip first before I welded that, uh, spot welded that uh, onto the pack. 
the battery looks pretty ugly here, but it's got uh, the BMS wires coming out quite nicely at one point. Uh, it's also got the Cora flute uh, on top and bottom of the pack and uh, some good use of electrical tape there to keep everything uh, together. Here's the first test fit into the bike and I was pretty happy at this point because everything fit in well with plenty of room left for padding. Uh, the balance leads uh, and the wires to the BMS were a little bit short at this point so I did actually have to uh, lengthen some of those um, for the way I had it laid out. So yeah, good idea to make them uh, nice and long. Well, as long as need be. At this point it was just time to add some protection to the battery uh, and I just used foam um, from Kmart, basically uh, different thickness gym mats uh, is what I used and a test fit uh, to the bike um, and that um, was about as thick as I was wanting to go on the battery itself. Next up was using the huge shrink wrap that I bought from eBay. Uh, it was pretty cheap and it worked really well and um, yeah, made a really nice pack out of it. And a final test fit to the bike, uh, it fit in really well, uh, but yeah, much more snug now than um, without the padding in. Here we have the Adapto BMS uh, with the connectors hot glued in. My plugs are actually not quite right, uh, but I managed to be able to modify them to fit um, and secure them in with hot glue. Um, I'm also using industrial Velcro uh, to mount the BMS to the top of the frame, which um, works really well. So that's basically it for the battery build, but I've got some pictures here of the Adapto controller and how I mounted it to the flux frame. So basically just made a big hole in the bottom of the frame to run the cables through into the frame uh, from the outside to the inside of the box. The Adapto display is pretty good, um, gives you great readouts on the status of your battery, um, certainly reassuring all your hard work uh, hasn't gone to waste. And here's a couple of pictures for good measure of my uh, first couple of rides out and about. I uh, had a ball and yeah, knew it's going to be uh, a great fun bike to ride for hopefully many years to come.